Hey folks, we're back today with the Wild Grapes Merlot Kit, and I am around 1.0 on this wine, yeah around 1.0. So what I'm going to be doing is racking then from here to a carboy. Now 1.0 is pretty dry but it's a little bit off dry so this is a Merlot I'm expecting this to be very dry so what I'm going to be doing is um, just transferring it to a carboy um, to let it sit for a couple more weeks to see if I get that down a little bit more than what it is. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this now to the carboy. Let me zoom out here a little bit here. Alright, so I'm going to transfer this to a carboy and I'm going to be using my all-in-one wine pump. Now if you don't have an all-in-one wine pump, you could simply put this on a higher level on top of the counter and use a siphon to get it from the top to the bottom and you guys have seen I probably have about 200 videos on doing wine making and you've seen me do that before but I'm going to be using the all-in-one wine pump today and the all-in-one wine pump does have a bunch of advantages um, one of the advantages is you don't have to lift heavy stuff which I hurt my back so I'm going to use an all-in-one wine pump and the um, one of the other advantages is it the gas is the wine as it's transferring. So I'm going to set that up now and we're going to get ready to rock and roll. And my coffee's ready. Look at that. Cool. All right. So be ready to rock and roll. All right. So one of the things I got here on my siphon or my uh, racking cane is the anti sediment tip. If you don't have this, you're going to pull sediment into the uh, carboy. All right, so I'm going to just throw that in here. I'm going to turn on my pump. All right, so my transfer now is complete. Um, one of the things I may consider to do at this point is if I had some oak cubes, put them in the carboy. Um, but see, um, what I'm probably going to do, because that's a six gallon carboy, and it looks like there's some space there, is normally I wouldn't be worrying so much about the space, but um, just because I want to free up this carboy and degas it a little bit more, one of the things I'm going to do, I have my five gallon carboy here. And I'm going to go from that one to this one. So, let me set that up. Alright, so I transferred again from one to the other to try to degas it a little bit more. And um, you could see all the bubbles that came up. So, I wasn't sure if it was recording or not, or if my battery just died. So, maybe I should show you that again. So in case it didn't record, all right, let me do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer from one to the other, then back again. And basically what that does is degasses. So I'm going to go back and forth. Take this one out. Put this one in here. Take this one. Put that one in there and let that transfer. So I'm going to do that so you can see it. Alright, so you guys can ha hopefully see how much is degassing every time I do a transfer. See the bubbles on the top? It's pulling the gas out of the wine. So that's really cool. So what I'm going to do is just go back one more time from the top, from the big one to the little one. 
And all I got to do to do that is take this out, do a little swap a -roo. From one to the other, put that on and let it rip again. We'll be back when that's finished going again. Alright folks, now that I got that rolling, I transferred a few times back and forth the gas a bit. I have my trusty airlock. And I'm going to throw that on my wine. And at the same time, I'm going to take the stuff that I have that came with the wine and put it on top so I don't lose it or get it confused with a different wine I'm making. So that's it. I'm going to let that sit. If you remember, I wanted this to get a little bit more dry than the reading on the uh, hydrometer says. Here's a hydrometer, right? So if you look at the reading, it was at 1.0, and um, I think it could get a little drier than that. So that's what we're going to hope for. So I'm going to let that sit like that probably another two weeks, around another two weeks before I transfer again and do my sparkle lighting, clearing, and all that other stuff. So uh, you guys have seen me do that on other videos, but stay tuned for a... Uh, update on this one in two weeks about and um, at the same time you can look at my other videos if you are past that but um, you know yeah you could let that sit now even in there once I got in that car boy you could let it sit there you know even a month or two not a problem okay the thing is getting it into the car boy so that's where we're at now and uh, but in about two weeks I'm going to be up to the next step and um, again, if you don't have the all-in-one wine pump, one of the things you can do is you could just get an auto siphon to transfer the wine. If you were degassing, you've seen me on some of my other videos doing degassing with a um, drill-mounted wine whip. Um, so that's a cool thing to have too. So um, there are options to do things differently than what I've done here, and you could see some of those options on my other videos. Again, the, um, the all-in-one wine pump has a lot of advantages, and one of them being you don't have to lift heavy stuff anymore, which is cool, all right? But, you know, um, it's all good. I still do both, and um, that's it. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and uh, take care. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to my video channel here on YouTube. And um, definitely check out my blogs, www.cookingitalianrecipes.com, with the dashes in the middle. Or um, my other one on winemaking, how to make homemade wine.biz. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And have an awesome day.